What's up YouTube? Welcome to my complete camera equipment guide. I've been promising you this video for quite a long time now, but I've been so busy working and so busy making money for my next travel, so I haven't had a lot of time to make this video, but here it is and um, I hope you will enjoy it. And first let me say, if you find any piece of this um, equipment interesting for you, I'll be linking all of it down below and um, yeah, you can go buy it yourself if, uh, if you want. But first things first, my camera and my all-time travel buddy is my Canon 1DX Mark II. The footage that comes out from this camera is just amazing. It is so awesome. And especially the slow motion coming out of this camera really looks spectacular. I really love this camera. And just for your information, all my shots from my last time I was in Southeast Asia is shot with my Panasonic Lumix G80. And um, it is an awesome camera too. It is much, much, much more cheap than um, the Canon 1DX Mark II. But of course, the quality comes with the price. And to be honest, the footage on the Canon 1DX Mark II is much better. But of course, you can get some awesome um, footage from a less expensive camera than the Canon 1DX Mark II. And what's also so nice about the Canon 1DX Mark II is that it is an awesome photography camera as well and um, carrying both um, the video camera and the photography camera in once can uh, sometimes be a little bit handy because you don't need to have two cameras it makes sense and then um, both the videos and the photo photography photography coming out of this camera looks awesome and especially the canon color science is just next level and then um, the competitors it's not even possible to compare with them the colors coming out, out from the Canon cameras. And another awesome thing about this camera is that the battery life is just crazy. It lasts for several days and then it is just awesome. It takes a lot of time to charge, but when it's charged, it lasts for a long time. And um, I just love a long battery life and working with it. But there are some downsides with the Canon 1DX Mark II. And um, as I said before, it is a crazy expensive camera. It is um, $5,000 for just um, the camera body without any, any lenses. So. It can very fast become a very, very, very expensive hobby to start filming. And um, I wouldn't say that you should just go out and buy this camera because it is really expensive. But if you have the budget, I would recommend that you go for a camera like this because it just makes your footage so much, so much better. And, and another downside is the file sizes that comes out from uh, the Canon 1DX Mark II. Um, they are crazy big. Actually, you can fill up one gigabyte at 10 seconds um, when you shoot 4k at um, 60 frames per second so crazy huge file size but if you are okay with it and um, want to deal with it and um, this camera is just amazing really next thing i want to talk about and the second most important thing is what's right here in front of me it is my lenses and um, i'm gonna carry these for my next travel um, and the lens that is on my camera right now and um, yeah let's just go through every single one of them this one is um, the Sigma 35 millimeter f 1.4 and um, what this is is that it is a prime lens so it is not possible to zoom it is stuck at um, 35 millimeters but 35 millimeters is actually a, an awesome zoom range and you can use it for so many um, different kinds of situation and um, what it is is that it is a low aperture lens um, which means it, it's a very very fast lens it lets more light into the sensor um, because of the low uh, because of the low f-stop and then um, it goes down to f 1.4 and um, it means that you can have something in the focus and the background will just be blurred away and um, it is an awesome tool and then um, you can use it for a lot of stuff and actually i think this lens is the one i'm using the most when i'm when i do um, cinematics so it is an awesome lens <coughs> next lens all right guys this one is my newest lens actually this one is um, the canon 100 millimeter f 2.8 L macro lens. I think I nailed it. And this is good for one thing, and that's macro shooting. Macro, macro shooting. And uh, macro shooting is in a specific uh, situation where you need to come very, very close to an object, and you can really see all of the details um, in the shot. And um, the quality in this lens is just crazy. It, it, it is so, so, so awesome. And um, this lens is possibly the best um, storytelling lens because you can go very, very close to an eye or maybe a leaf and really see all the details within the shot. And what's so nice about this lens is that it has image stabilization as well. So it means that you can do a handheld shot and it, it wouldn't be so shaky that it would be with them this lens. So yeah, I would definitely always carry this lens with me. It is awesome and it is one of the best storytelling lenses of all time. I love this lens. The last lens is this one and um, it is not my favorite lens, let's, let me be honest. And it is the Canon, hold on, 
the Canon 75 to 300 millimeter f I think it's f 5.6 lens. So the f stop is really really high. But I, I love having um, a zoom lens with me, and, and that's why I'm carrying this one. I'm not using it so much, but I like having a zoom lens just in case that there's an object far away that I will take um, some some shots of. So I do like having it, but I'm not using it a lot. And my last lens is what's at my camera right now. It is the Canon the 17 to 40 millimeter f 4.0. And then um, what's nice about this lens is it is very very wide angles, so it is very good for when you are going around and vlogging and talking to the camera and, and doing um, things like I'm doing right now, where I'm sitting here and talking and um, it is an awesome lens to a, a lot of shooting actually and uh, it is a, a good lens at the um, landscape photography, landscape videography as well because it has a lot of range. This is my number one vlogging lens and um, I, would, I would never go outside with my camera without having this lens with me. It is awesome. Alright guys, the next thing I want to talk about is this little bad boy right here. It is not on right now, so it's a little bit jerky, but um, it is the DJI Ronin M. And um, what it is, is it is a stabilizer for your camera. You put your camera here and you power it on um, and it will just keep the camera stable when you're walking around with it. And it is probably the best solution um, if you want stable footage. Um, it is an alternative to a glide cam and um, it is a little bit more expensive than a glide cam actually but it is easier to use and um, I think it's awesome to have it to have it stabilized electronically um, so you don't have to use a lot of the techniques and uh, stuff like that. It is just um, the most easy solution and I think the results you get out of this stabilizer is a little bit better than with a glide cam. Correct me if I'm wrong but I have never tried a glide cam but I do like having this one. But it is going to be very, very challenging traveling with this one because it is just not so handy. But I think it's possible to fold it a little bit down and put it in a suitcase, something like that. But I really want to bring this one, so I think I'll skip some of your t-shirts and trousers to, <laughs> to get space enough for this one. The next thing I want to talk about is this one. It is my drone. It is the DJI Phantom 3 Professional. And um, it is actually the Phantom 3 Professional. If you know anything about the DJI lineup, you'll probably be surprised about my crazy awesome decoration and the color of this one. Normally it is just gold in, the, in these, but this camera is an awesome camera and then having a drone really just give a whole new dimension to your videos. And I really like the um, DJI Phantom 3 Professional. I'm sure you can get um, better drones and then um, I heard about the DJI Phantom 4 lineup and um, it should be even better than this one but I haven't upgraded it yet and um, it works fine for me so why not have this little friend right here. It is um, awesome, it got a battery life for about 23 minutes so you need to change um, the battery frequently. Okay, so that was basically all of my cameras and um, I have a few extra things that I want to show you. First thing is this one, it is um, the Decap Pack waterproof case. And it is actually for a lot of different DSLRs camera, but it fits the Canon 1DX Mark II. And then um, you can just open it up and put your camera down here. Um, and actually you need to attach the lens after you have put the camera down in the case. But it should be, according to the internet, waterproof down to five meter. But I wouldn't put my Canon 1DX Mark II camera inside here and go dive, diving with it down to five meters below the surface, because I think you're taking a bit of a risk. Um, when you're diving with it, but you can possibly use it for um, shooting in the surface. And it is a nice thing to have um, to make your camera some kind of waterproof. Just let me be clear, you're taking a risk every time you are diving with your camera um, in this case. And the next thing is my MacBook. It is the MacBook Pro 13 inch Vitrina. Um, Retina. Retina. <laughs> I'm not sure how you spell it. And the software I'm using on this MacBook is in the Final Cut Pro and um, I just love editing in Final Cut Pro. I've tried out Premiere Pro um, but I really don't like it and um, I'll stick with the Final Cut Pro, I'm pretty sure about that. But this MacBook actually has a little bit of trouble um, editing 4K footage. Normally I shoot in 1080p but when I do shoot something in 4K it is having a little bit of trouble and um, it will lag a little bit. But it is fine for 1080p, but if you're recording 4K, you'll probably need a little bit more spec out in MacBook Pro than this one. But it is more than perfect for editing in 1080p. 
Next thing I want to show you is what's in the back right here. I just recently got these in headphones and it is the Bang & Olufsen um, H8 Bioplay it is called. But possibly this headphones isn't something for you because it is that expensive. You can probably get some in-ear headset that is just as good as this one. I just love having an awesome headset that you can wear for hours and hours without your ears starts to hurt. And um, this one is definitely a great solution. It's awesome. I like it. And to deal with these huge file sizes that comes out from the Canon 1DX Mark II, you'll probably need to have some external hard drives as well. And I'm using a VD My Passport Ultra, Ultra, Ultra it is called. And most people actually use um, the Seagate hard drives, but I actually had a very bad experience with um, the Seagate hard drives because I lost almost a month of uh, footage back from Thailand. And um, I just tried a new one and this one has just worked perfect for me. But I think I was just very, very unlucky with my um, Seagate hard drive because a lot of people are using it with um, success, but I just had a bad, bad experience with it and that's why I'm not using uh, the Seagate hard drives. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for this video and um, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video, please click the subscribe button. It will make me so happy and um, yeah, stay tuned for our next adventure. It will soon begin and I can't wait to take every single one of you to go traveling with me. I can't wait guys. Time is just going so slow at the moment, but we are soon there. One and a half month and we'll be traveling together. See you guys.